best pro wrestling podcast. Listen up, wrestling fans. My botch. You know I got zero F's to give. Samoa Joe. What the hell are we? That's open hand smack, huh? Get it right in the nuts. Not like most men. And this is not like most podcasts where they sit and be negative, Nancy's all over everything. This is the best pro wrestling podcast where we try to keep it positive and talk about the best pro wrestling in the world. My name is Tommy Stryker. Joe is here back in studio this week. Woo! Taco's back as well as what usual. Up? And we are celebrating uh, the many, many tournaments that have been in wrestling uh, this year. Another one uh, wrapped up a couple of weeks back. Taco mm-hmm. was the loser in the prediction bracket, boop, 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 boop. and he has provided the uh, Castle Danger beers again this week. And uh, again, very good, deliciously, dangerously good ales, as it says <laughs> on the can. So thank you taco for bringing that to the mm-hmm. table as much as nobody cares about our prediction brackets thank yourselves <laughs> but, for uh, having better choices than me <laughs> <laughs> there you go uh so yeah we taught we try to talk uh keep it positive we are going to talk raw we'll talk a little bit of smackdown mm-hmm. definitely going to talk nxt we've got to talk may young classic big mm-hmm. finals coming up next week we got to talk some new japan it's been a couple of weeks since we've had anything to talk right? about but we got some destruction shows coming up this week uh to talk about those we'll talk uh did I say NXT? Sure. Anyway, we're going to talk that. Last, we're going to talk last week's Lucha Underground Ring of Honor, of course. So we'll get into all of it except for this week's Lucha Underground, <laughs> pretty much, because we decided instead of watching Lucha Underground, let's just get into the podcast because mm-hmm. there's plenty to talk about. Let's get anyway. deep in that podcast. Yes. So let's uh, let's start off with some news. Pro wrestling news. We have quite a bit of news for you. News. In our uh, our pre-show uh, production meeting, we talked about the Global Force news, and Taco mm. mentioned he doesn't even want to talk about Global Force. It's so depressing, man. It, well, it, it, like, I tweeted out, can we just take old Yeller out back and fucking end this so these talent can go elsewhere? Like, yeah, for and, fuck's sake. And I liked Bully Ray's tweet talking about how... It's never been a talent issue no. at TNA, Global Force, whatever you want to call it. It's always been a management issue. And when Anthem brought Jeff Jarrett back into the fold, <laughs> I mean, what did you expect? If you haven't heard, Jeff Jarrett uh, has uh, some drinking issues, stepping down as uh, as the uh, the creative manager, whatever whatever his position is, he's stepping away. Uh, <laughs> you know, fucking drunk texting Rebby Hardy. Uh, I'm starting to think it's night. not the business and it's Karen Jarrett. I mean, look what she did to Kurt. Now she went on to Jeff. Well, <laughs> there is a long storied history of issues uh, in the professional wrestling business. Uh, so there is, it's no surprise there. No. So now the rumors are going around that Anthem is maybe looking to get out of owning Global Force, mm-hmm. TNA, whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, so there's that. It's funny because they just re-signed a new deal with Pop TV. So does, is WWE interested? Is Billy Corgan interested again at this point? Uh, does If it ends up back in WWE, is it convenient for the Hardys? Because then they would now conveniently own the Hardy gimmick mm-hmm. again. Uh, at least WWE would. So Honestly, I, fuck, man. I just, I just hope WWE just buys them up at this point just so we can get that fucking library. Like... Obviously, no one's fucking doing anything with it. Let's make some dough off of it, get some new subscribers. Imagine all those fucking TNA heads are still sticking through, you man. Ah, oh, man, no, I don't bro. know. I don't think there's that many. That <laughs> I really don't. There are. They were picking up some steam these last what couple months now. Yeah, and... but it's a lot. It's it's all the same listeners. The numbers haven't been drastically up or down. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of the the same old, same old. Yeah, I've, I've heard good things kind about of picking out some of the Lucha Underground talent, which is you know wise because they haven't even been announced for a fourth season yet. You know, right. all the big wiggers are, are, are leaving. You know, Ricochet's being eyeballed from the WWE right now. Right. So they're snatching everyone bald they can. They're, they're doing all that, but they're not turning it into any kind of money-making situation it's here It's not going to be an States. overnight success, though, either. They just did those three uh, house shows or whatever in the, on the East Coast not too long ago, mm-hmm. and those were, they had to cancel one of them. Yeah. And, you know, th- so those were <laughs> failures. So it's just they, it's, it's it's damaged goods, man. It's just, oh, it just uh, really is. Yeah, end it. Let these guys go elsewhere. I mean, better off just letting it go and having something else start something completely new because Mm -hmm. anything that's associated with old tna is going to have that stigma anything new right now 
There's so much fucking wrestling. We don't need well, anything new. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the thing. We have enough to talk about on this show already. And so, I mean, with New Japan, it's great. With uh, Lucha Underground, it's fun. I, 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 I it's won't, different. It's 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 it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ring of Honor has been good. You know. So I mean, there's there's so many great alternatives right now. There's there's something for everybody for whatever your taste is in pro wrestling. I mean, we we talked. We were just watching the May Young Classic earlier today, yep. and uh, you know, we I, I'm like. I'm sitting there watching this and thinking, oh man, I want to see more Tony Storm. Now I got to go watch right. Progress or Stardom or whatever. And so it's just there because there's there's so much I want to see and it, it, it's tough well, to to, to keep there. up all, all the good <laughs> with all the good stuff. So let's move on moving on in the news. Kenny Omega uh, suffered a minor yeah. knee injury and but he's still going to be defending the the IWGP mm-hmm. US title at the end of the month uh, versus uh, Juice Robinson. But he Juice. is he is going to take the, the the majority of the tour off, and uh, one of the other uh, gorillas of destiny. Well, the new newest gorilla, Leo of destiny, Tonga. Leo Tonga. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, Joe. He's going to be debuting for New Japan. He's been training in the dojo, and he's going to be joining, taking Kenny's place on the tour, joining the gorillas of destiny uh, here and there on um. the tour. So I'm looking for. It sounds like he's a big dude. So um, I like it because you know it's um. Tomatonga's brother, isn't it? Yeah. Like but, blood brother. Yep, yep. So it, it's cool. It's really, uh, like I said on previous podcasts, it's like uh, he really, you know, I really enjoyed him in the G1 this year and him kind of stepping up to the plate, you know, kind of calling out Omega. So him kind of bringing his brother in, kind of getting that spotlight too a little bit. Fucking take the reins, dude. Now's your time. Yeah, I'm excited to see Well, uh, they could have did looks. nothing. Basically, they could have did nothing just because they've got enough talent sure, on this sure. tour. They but the put- fact that they're like, look, it's not Kenny Omega, but here's something. Here's something new. Here's right. something fresh. Right. Well, they they could have thrown, thrown in Yujiro or Chase fucking Owens mm-hmm. or something. You know, well, it's kind of a, you know, like the dude was just a fucking young lion November. <laughs> oh, see, well, there you go. So that's, you know, it's making an impact. All right. What other news was there now? I, we were just talking about it before. This. Uh, Dijak was officially announced mm-hmm. for NXT. Dijak. Yeah, we that's had good the signing pictures there. of him in NXT. Uh, well, back to Kenny Omega. You said, Taco, he's going to be doing some shows in oh, Florida. Oh, yeah, there was, uh, I don't remember exactly which dates off the top of my head. Is but it just an indie promotion? No, it sounds like with Ring of Honor still. Oh, okay. So. Interesting. Yep. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, well, well, good for him. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to seeing Kenny Omega live in Chicago mm-hmm. in October. Lucky Going to be making the drive <laughs> down to... Uh, to the Windy City uh, from Minneapolis when that takes place. The Windy place. Apple. So I'll be <laughs> looking forward to that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the news. Uh, yeah. We'll get to everything else as we kind of march on through here. So uh, let's get right into Monday Night Raw. Change the subject. Monday Night Raw. Good Raw this week, I, I, yeah. I thought. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, better, <laughs> definitely in contrast with what happened on SmackDown. We'll get to that, of course. But, uh, yeah, the big main event, Big Show versus Braun Strowman in wow. the double reinforced ring <laughs> in the steel cage. Uh, it was a, it was a fun story, right? I mean... I, oh, hell yeah, dude. And, uh, like, even interviewing the referee that was in the original match yes. when they broke the, broke the mm-hmm. ring and the fact that he technically got injured because of that. Yeah, that was a nice touch. I fucking loved Big Show's fucking promo. I, Braun Strowman, in order for you to put me out to pasture... You're going to have to break me. And let me smarten you up, son. In 23 years, there hasn't been one superstar big enough or bad enough to break me. So you want to send me a little message? Well, I got a message for you. You call yourself the monster among men? I'm the world's largest athlete. So, yeah, I, I loved that. I really enjoyed the match. The story of the match itself, kind of unfinished business from mm-hmm. the, the, the the match where they broke the ring right after WrestleMania this year. Uh, so coming back to that without that coming to a conclusion, yeah. and then it finally coming to the conclusion with the big power slam from uh, Strowman. Uh, this whole Raw was just a prime example of it's fucking holidays, no one's watching, let's just throw a fucking match out there, but doing everything right. Just the going into Raw is like we're, we're doing these two again, and they right. and constantly they went, prove us wrong. Those two, yeah, it's like, and, and wow. when, when it got just thrown out there in the middle of the week, like on social media or mm-hmm. however they announced it, it was like, oh, they're just gonna. Why is it in a steel cage? Why? It's, da, 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 da. it's just a very thrown together. No one's fucking watching. Let's just do something. Match and fucking it. 
it was great. Yeah, and if, like I said, if you think about it, there's a story there too that makes yeah. sense. And uh, you, know, you could argue whether or not they did a good job telling it going <laughs> into the match, but uh, the match itself was a lot of fun. They just take turns ramming each other into the cage. Mm-hmm. Fucking Big Show going up top a couple of times. Yeah, there. I like. I even enjoyed Booker T getting in on it. Like he's going, he's gonna hit that top rope elbow he used to do in the nineties. Right. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I liked him getting into it, it, it fucking going up to the going up twice, Strowman hitting the big suplex again. I was almost expecting to hear boos from the crowd when the ring didn't break. <laughs> but the, you know the crowd was hot for it. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, the way I mean, this was just two big dudes not doing much, not doing anything fancy, just fucking running into each other and the crowd was fucking hot for it. Mm-hmm. So and it was good, it was fun. So yeah, that's fucking Braun Strowman to the team, man. Just everything he's been doing has just been fucking fun, and that's the point of the biz. And and the fact that he did break Big Show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, throwing him through the cage. Well, and supposedly, at the end of the match. I and I forgot. That I just forgot. Fun. I don't. I haven't seen any confirmation on this, but he was uh, Big Show had to be helped to the back after the match, like actually, like limping, not I, like I watched it a couple of times, and it was it looks it looked more brutal than I thought it was, but. Uh, Him going through the cage? Yeah. Oh, that looked fun as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like landing on trampoline. Yeah, bouncing up and down on the cage, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it was a cool, unique spot, too. So mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I was I was cool with it. The uh, We got to talk the Cena Reigns promo, the second edition, mm-hmm. version two, uh, from what, the continuation from last week. Of course, it was the opening match, Cena versus Jason Jordan. Fuck a yeah. fun yeah. opening competitive match. Uh, Again, fucking prime example of using your holiday no one's watching shows perfectly like throw the young kid with cena you know just fucking show him off and that's what they did yeah yeah and cena with something to prove being the grizzled veteran that he is being thrown out there in the opening match with a rookie but then the uh the you know the the, the switch up of it all roman reigns the biggest heel in the world coming out <laughs> and be like oh what you can't hang with a with a with a rookie so i uh, uh excuse me i the i uh, you are what you say you are Why does it take a 16-time champ over 20 minutes to beat a rookie? You lied last week. And you're not as strong, you're not as fast, you're not as good as you say or think you are. Because you're a lying, fake-ass little bitch. (laughs) He's a lion? What's that? He's a lion? <laughs> <laughs> That's New Japan, the lion. Oh, ah, yes. Uh, yes. So, but that, that reigns with his, with coming out and saying, oh, how, how come? <laughs> e- either e- either you're not very good or you're stringing them so long, making you think, uh, you know, you're entertaining the fans or whatever kind of a, kind of a thing. So, I kind of liked uh, Roman kind of calling him out a little right. bit there. But, okay. I got. I've got pretty much the entire Cena promo here, <laughs> I've got, with some 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 stuff edited out. But uh, we can pause as we go through this two minutes of audio from <laughs> Cena here because I, it was so great and so many. I have so many thoughts about it as it goes. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll just kind of march on through here. So which is it, John? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Debbie Downer to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Roman, I, I, I'd say I'm happy to see you, but I'm disgusted by your whole face. So, <laughs> great stuff from Cena right off the bat. Just like, how, how awesome. We finally have like a match to open up Monday Night Raw. Yeah. And then, yeah, here's Debbie Downer. I hate your face. <laughs> so, good stuff. You are doing the worst possible thing that a man like you could do right now, and that's try to use your brain. <laughs> we all saw last week, homie, just, just stay in your lane. That's not your strong suit. You're going to get the end. Again, it's Cena with the clever lines, calling out Roman for being doing stupid stuff a Who's lot. me, Roman. For not <laughs> uh, being clever on the mic, and, and for just, whenever he comes out to do a promo, it's yeah. just like, ah, fuck this guy. Right. So, yeah. Get the answers to these questions, Roman. Don't burn your brain cells. For, for gosh sake, you come out here with your zipper open. <laughs> I busted it, actually. Big dog. Oh, oh sorry, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking for your balls, but you ain't. <laughs> so, that, come on, that that exchange between now that right. was Roman actually being clever. That was really yes. funny, very good. And, and John with <laughs> looking for your balls, line. right? Just, just good, spot on. Dude. Yeah, this is what. I need from wrestling promos. I need more authenticity, Them. more just guys just calling each other out, talking shit. Mm-hmm. You know, th- uh, this was great. But you ain't got none, so it's okay. <laughs> You're going to get beat. 
and you're going to get beat by either a guy who lost a step or a guy who's been stringing you along for years. <laughs> Letting your waltz out here mistake after mistake <laughs> after mistake because you're a conceited, know-it-all, golden boy who needs to be taught a lesson in respect. Oh, so uh, bringing it back to the respecting Roman coming out, always looking smug, looking you know, like he doesn't, you know, doesn't give a fuck. So no Cena's just fucks. been letting him fucking be a, a dumbass for for how many years? And here comes Cena to put him in his place. At work, shoot, I don't care. I love it. Hell <laughs> so, yeah! Uh, you well, know, think about going scripted, into this whatever. match. We're all like. Ugh, and it's been one of the most exciting things on Raw week after week now. So it's definitely fuck, man. Give these guys the freedom. Oops. Well, oh. go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say because I was the one that was, I wasn't like completely like negative on the whole thing there last week. <laughs> fuck you, Taco. <laughs> but um, we're talking now, ain't we? Yeah, you're hearing me now, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just the fact that they were able to follow it up consistently here this second week it's got me more and more interested in it it's just that that roman thing is tough guys like jason jordan guys like chad gable they have to scratch and claw for every single inch hell even a dude like the miz who i despise but he scratches and claws and earns every single inch week by week damn i respect that he didn't mention AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, some other <laughs> guys that he's put over recently. Uh, and I like this is the more storyline sense of it all, where you know he's pointing he's pointing to guys that the fans respect because they're known to have come up the hard way. Mm-hmm. He, Roman's paid some dues. He was he was he he, he you know he well uh, he he was down in FCW. He got trained. Yes, he's been he was the chosen guy out of the shield. But go ahead, Taka. Uh, you know, I'm glad he brought up the Miz in this situation because you know obviously they had their history. People yeah. love the Miz, but they fucking hate him too. But, you know, I mean, all those guys you uh, just mentioned, they never had their clothes thrown out of the fucking locker room and had changed behind a fucking crate. There's you know, that, like, yep. Miz has worked his ass off. He yes. had that fucking real world taboo behind him going into it. And he fucking, I, I don't even think of that anymore when I see him, unless I'm telling someone that I know that hates wrestling but sees him. I'm like, yeah, that's the guy from the real world. Still the Miz. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, what? it's it, almost proud of the guy because it's like, I remember that drunk asshole. <laughs> I remember when that episode was new. <laughs> well, it, Miz does it right too. He's he's the heel that you like to hate. Mm-hmm. Whereas Roman's just a guy like, ah, oh, fuck this this guy. Is, he just he's in the wrong role. He's he, he, you know what I'm saying. And, but, it, and when I see like Roman out doing you know like. It's gonna sound dickish, but like charity cases, it just seems like he's going there to do it. <laughs> Where I see like Miz on TV doing it, he's fucking doing the John Cena thing. He's everywhere, making sure he's getting the name out. Like I, I, I do get a legit, you know, feeling from Miz. Where you know, like Roman Reigns is just <laughs> going through the Baron Corbin, you know, <laughs> mentality. I don't respect you. You come out here and say it's your yard. They don't agree so much. You come out here and say you're the guy. They don't agree so much. Is there any room? I think he's talking to Vince McMahon. There? <laughs> this is the most over John Cena's ever been. Right? <laughs> come out with versus Roman Reigns in the fucking Omaha, Nebraska crowd's like, Cena, Cena, <laughs> Cena. <laughs> oh, oh, come on now. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, is there any room in that clouded, protected conceited brain of yours for you to actually see what the hell is going on here or do i have to beat some common sense into you now we're talking john (laughs) do it just like i thought you're all talk john and that's why i don't respect you i'm curious to see what you guys thought of how that ended with Cena calling him out, be like, or uh, Reigns calling mm-hmm. Cena out, like, go ahead, do it, beat me up, let's go. And then Cena more or less backing off, backing away. Uh, what did? What was your guys' take on that? Honestly, it's just I think they're just still honey dicking us with trying to think, <laughs> trying to make us believe that he might make that heel turn, and with that call out and. I just think they did the right thing with John because, I mean, he's not going to just beat the shit out of somebody in the <laughs> ring, and he's going to walk away because, again, he's got no respect for him, so why the fuck would he listen to him? I Go ahead. What did you think, Taco? 
I love that Roman Reigns called him out, because that is Roman Reigns. You know, he does show up to fight. He is the fucking f- leading the charge all the time going into a battle and you know, in that ring. That's just who he is. And I do like that John Cena was like, nah. <laughs> like, I, I, I did like that, because, you know, that, that's a prime example of it's kind of reverse, but good guy, bad guy, like, to its core. And um, it just, you know, it's it's not it's not time yet you know they got to keep keep them separated i don't want to see no fingers on it until the pay-per-view <clears throat> I, I i can't disagree with with that sentiment of let's keep them separate but i just didn't like how it made cena look i think cena should have been playing the role of the of the uber baby face mm-hmm. and when a motherfucker calls you out you fucking go after right him. and so i didn't like cena backing away there i would i wouldn't mind it and they could still tell this story that once you know maybe there's a rule a clause in the contract that they signed when they had the contract signing last week uh that after the contract contract is signed for the match no physicality is allowed between the two com- uh, combatants or, or the match becomes null and void or whatever mm-hmm. uh, or the match is canceled so if they could explain that on tv this week i would be more satisfied <laughs> with it but as, as 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 someone who was rooting for john cena in this feud uh i was disappointed for sure in cena so, but uh, it, it was still—it didn't take away from the greatness overall of the promo. If we just didn't get a twenty-minute John Cena match and another ten-minute promo from the two of them, I might be a little bit more butthurt. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, other stuff from Monday Night Raw: the IC title match between Jeff Hardy and the Miz. Uh, Miz, of course, retaining with the skull-crushing finale after Maurice mm-hmm. saves Miz from the top rope swanton. I uh, got a fun promo from the Hardys going into it. It, uh, but just a good kind of like mid card right. match in the <laughs> middle of uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, but uh, it, w- it was good there. Uh, the Bar beat Slater and Rhino. Nothing big there. Uh, Enzo got a win in a six man tag match over Drew Gulak with a eye poke and eat defeat. So even though Enzo is a baby face, he's poking guy. He's poking heels in the eyes Can to we get wins. Sidebar to two hundred five, real quick. Go for it. I yes. did watch it. Uh, I did not. So this is. This I don't is know if I they knew. um um. Fuck, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> Enzo, Enzo. Enzo on uh, Raw, they announced that they were going to do um, the uh, the, fi- uh, the f- uh, five-man elimination match for the normal okay. contender. Uh, it was actually a pretty solid match. It was uh, Cedric Alexander, uh, fucking Meta- Metalik. Grand Metalik. Um, Enzo, uh, Ke- the Brian Kendrick, and fucking can't think of who the other one was, but it was a... F- uh, fun match to watch okay pretty much uh enzo was running heel the whole time like just trying to cheap you know that's his whole gimmick now is just i gotta yeah. win i gotta you know just do whatever it is Any to win necessary. which it works for him because it's the most believable like this match was phenomenal because they all just turned and looked at enzo like <laughs> what are you doing in my oh it was um um tony niece was the other guy sure, sure. and you know they just all turned like putting all their palms beside each other and it's like fuck you man and then he just <laughs> got the fuck out of there and well if you think about it, that's the the only story they can tell oh, with the guy because he doesn't have a very mm-hmm. good arsenal of offense. And, and, so. and it was just basically it was a fatal four way match. <laughs> and it was <laughs> it was a fun match to watch. Um, uh, um, Cedric Alexander though he looked phenomenal in this match. He basically cool, got cool. almost all the eliminations in it. You know, throwing out his finisher everywhere, and you know. Um, Enzo actually ended up winning it, <laughs> you know, but it was a very cheap win because like he was on Raw, you know, buddying up with um, Cedric Alexander and Grand Metalik, and uh, and that's when it got thrown their way that we're gonna do this fatal five way. So what's next for Enzo? Uh, Titus Brand possibly? I don't know, but <laughs> it, it definitely does seem he is going more of the heelish route. I don't know how that's going to translate to the crowd because they just love to fucking chant and do all that stupid Especially shit. Especially going with up him. against Neville. But I just, I just really enjoyed it, and I, I I do like what they are doing with him on two hundred five because they are kind of you know, they are getting more eyes on them. But it's just I I don't know. This is the best. This is the funnest and best Enzo Enzo I have personally. You know I've been experiencing. So right on, right on. Other stuff from Raw, uh, Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks, who are, are supposed to be facing each other <laughs> at uh, at uh, No Mercy, took on Nia Jax and Emma. Uh, if uh, Nia Jax and Emma win, they get added to the match to make it a four-way, and Nia Jax and Emma get the win. So <laughs> rewind to three weeks ago when I'm complaining about Emma not getting the, the push she so richly deserves, and then, of course, she gets the win mm-hmm. last week, and now getting the win, now she's in the championship match. Uh, I do like, on Twitter, they're doing a little kayfabe uh, work shoot kind of a thing where well well 
Emma was was working, saying that uh, <laughs> in the match she's going to become the new women's champion, blah, 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 getting what I finally deserve. And then Nia Jax uh, <laughs> going on Twitter, being a little uh, less storyline and a little more... Uh, 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 real life about it, talking about oh, well, you're mad because Vince didn't give you the push you, that you wanted, even though he gave you uh, six, six months, months worth of, of vignettes <laughs> and da 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 da. So throwing a little shade there, but I like it. It, it adds to the intrigue uh, of that match coming up. So actually, uh, en- I enjoyed this match. I did. Um, I, I I did like the the two of them having to team up because it's like, why do you want four fucking people in this match? So right. I like that dynamic there, and you know, I actually enjoyed Anaya in this match and I like the change to her outfit finally it, she looked like a normal wrestler <laughs> there you go there you go that helped I didn't even notice one step of, one step yeah, at a time she had more like lacing on it still kind of the okay, same okay, but okay. you know it's just you know how much I fucking hate that thing yeah, yeah. it's just she's I think she's starting to pick it up a little bit more <laughs> Well, it, it takes time, and, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, like which I said, is good. You know, I, I do wish them the best. So it's well, on that know, moment with uh, win us over Nia Jax and Bliss, where she screams, like, <laughs> scares, oh, yeah. scares Alexa. <laughs> I, I, I got a pretty good laugh out of that. All right, let's move on to SmackDown, shall we? Change the subject, not for long. <laughs> SmackDown <laughs> Live. Try to keep it positive. Please. Positive right off the bat. Corey Graves joined the announced team on yes. SmackDown. This is after JBL stepped away. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like he's going to be both Raw and SmackDown. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Nigel McGuinness is moving in on 205 Live. Yes, sir. And what was the other one? Main Event or yeah. Superstars? Yep. Whichever. Oh, that's a thing, so. Main Event. I guess so, yeah. Wow. Superstars was canceled. Oh, that's Come smooth. on, guys. <laughs> Let's get, get together. I'm not watching either, and I haven't watched <laughs> 205 in a long time either. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, but I hear the uh, main guy on 205 is pretty good, the, the little bit that I've heard of him. Corey Graves Corey Jr. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Get some tattoos, loosen up hey, that tie, that's a and we're there. compliment being Corey Graves Jr. There, there you go. Well, yeah, now I'm, now I'm interested to, well, he's not on 205 Live, so never mind. <laughs> but uh-huh. Nigel McGuinness should be good in that in yep. that role. So I've liked Nigel ever since he was on Ring of Honor. And yeah, good for that guy. Well, like, and I like that they've been NXT. slow with building his almost like heel ways. Like it started off, he was just just the announcer he was calling it straight and then he's just been slowly peppering in these little things with the heel wrestlers as well yeah mm-hmm. yeah i liked i like subtlety and uh, uh yeah a little, a little nuance in the in the heel uh the pro heel announcer so i got a burp coming on here this damn beer beer is delicious but holy cow <laughs> yeah it's a burpy one yeah jesus Hey, why fart and waste and we burp and taste it? There you go. Uh, Nakamura <laughs> versus Orton in the main event, the number one contenders match. Uh, this was probably one of the better Nakamura matches on the main roster, mm-hmm. but it didn't blow me away uh, by any means. I uh, think I could watch these two wrestle a lot, though. They've been really getting together. Like, just they work well off of each Orton other. Orton and Nakamura? Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was some clunkiness uh, in the match, if, but I think that could be overcome. This if was, they had an actual feud over like yeah. the, the 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 championship, I'm with Joe. I Unf- think we can get some good shows think, out of them. I think we could too. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to go there with both of them <laughs> no. being baby faces. But uh, Nakamura getting the win with the Kinshasa, so it's going to be Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal at the uh, at, uh, Hell in a Cell, I guess. Yep. Uh, sometime in October, <laughs> way down the line. It feels like forever from now, even though we're uh, early in September. I really enjoyed that uh, spot, though, with uh, Orton going for the RKO and then Nakamura countering into yeah. an arm bar. That yeah, was just that, fucking sick, dude. That was nice. That was nice. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, this week's SmackDown wasn't huge, but we had some entry. Well, there was the, the Shane McMahon, Kevin Owens thing. I think you're kind of a- dogging on a little bit too hard. <laughs> well, to me, it was just a lot of talking and not a ton of action, too, but... But uh, a lot of stuff happened. It was newsworthy, mm. I think, as Renee Young like said. Like last week's was just quick match, roll up, quick match, bullshit. Like, I don't know. Like, At least we got a good main event. We got a good main yeah. event. Uh, just the, the progress of Kevin Owens throughout the whole show is just... That was a I good fucking story. love what he's doing. His little fucking temper tantrums, and you know we'll go into <laughs> it. But well, yeah, I like I like the whole him coming out to referee Carmella's match. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like Shane, like no, we're not, no, we're not doing this. They get into it. Shane goes off on Kevin Owens for talking about his family a couple. Don't of talk times. about his kids, man. Don't talk about Shane's kids. Look out. Talk uh, about his wife all you want. He doesn't care about his we wife. Talk about but my don't kids. talk about I the kids. I see red. <laughs> 
Uh, Daniel Bryan's performance in the suspension of Shane McMahon was was very good. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed that aspect of it. So yeah, Shane McMahon is indefinitely suspended, and we're going to get Vince McMahon coming next week uh, for the the big show in Vegas to address the entire situation. So that should be really good. Fact. <laughs> uh, we, we got a big show coming up next week yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, a lot of titles on the uh, We got the women's title match between uh, Natalia and Naomi, the rematch there. <laughs> the uh, Apparently, we're going to get the uh, United States Championship match between AJ and Ty yeah. Dillinger. Of course, Ty Dillin- Dillinger had the match Ten. versus uh, Baron Corbin this week on SmackDown. It went well for him, too. It was a decent match. Uh, Corbin did get the win with, with the win with the end of the, uh, the end of days. <laughs> Clash uh, of the Titans. But, of course, it was after uh, some shenanigans or, or what the hell was there even shenanigans in there what, what, what the hell is that because AJ was was at there ringside was, and that's why AJ was giving him the he, I know Corbin hit that cheap shot but uh, kind of behind the ref just punching him uh, when the ref was yeah. back uh, was when he was trying to separate wow him Corbin match corner. forgettable go figure right <laughs> <laughs> oh wow tight end match forgettable <laughs> go figure yeah, that's true but uh, <laughs> and, yeah, but I liked AJ going up to Ty in the bag like hey man you put up a good fight uh, open challenge next week I'm gonna make it open to one man only you right well uh, good because that first match they had was kind of fucking Bunk as shit, dude. Like, he, he, I, I don't, I don't get the Ty Dillinger thing. People fucking love him. I haven't had a match where I was like, wow, that guy was great. But t- AJ Styles is that guy to fucking show him off. So let's do it. Sure, sure. Well, and I am a Ty Dillinger guy, and yeah. he hasn't blown me away in any matches. Let's be honest <laughs> what? here. No, he's fun, he's had a, he's had a couple good ones, but generally he's the, solid. The good ones he has are generally losses. You know, when <laughs> well, it comes down to it, and that's kind of what kept him down at NXT for so long. What finally got him up was the gimmick, the ten gimmick, the perfect ten mm-hmm. gimmick. But it was always, you know, he's just a, he's a fine wrestler. There's nothing wrong with him. Oh, solid but, performer. You know, nothing that's it just doesn't stand he's out. Never other wowed than his, me. Other than his gimmick, exactly. And so that's kind of what kept him down at NXT for so long. And it's, it's he's getting mixed reactions up on the main roster. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not. Well, we don't know him on the main roster. Right, well, yeah, people that. know the ten champ, but they don't know Ty Dillinger sometimes. Right. Right. Uh, we had the Aiden English Sammy Zayn uh, match, which was a uh, ooh, 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 ooh. super neat. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I was trying to get. Th- I-, I wanted to watch the match, but I had. To, I was. Just, uh, I got to get through this. I can't. I, I, I mean, hope I- it's a feud between the two because as. I think we're going to get a good performance out of them. Great fucking matches. Just let's not do this quick match with these two because fucking I'm starting to like Aiden English. I hate to admit it. (laughs) (laughs) uh, He's fucking entertaining now. And I I don't know. Like, give me more. I don't know. that The singing every time is... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> can't, can't deal with the singing every time, but I like I like Sammy fucking chasing him out of there after the match. Mm-hmm. Like Sammy interrupts him in the beginning. They have the match. Sammy loses to the most devastating move in professional wrestling, the the roll up. And then after the match, he goes to finish the song, and then Sammy Zayn's like, "Fuck this guy!" and just ch- <laughs> chases him out of there. So I, I enjoyed that part of it. Carmella broke up with James Ellsworth for uh, mm-hmm. attempting to possibly cash in the money in the bank, which would have made sense. Carmella was winning. Carmella had <laughs> Natalia down. Go ahead, cash the fucking thing in and win right there. But no, she gets mad at Ellsworth, breaks up with him. Then later in the show, Ellsworth is mopey as fuck. She grabs him and uh, uh, apparently accepts the apology, gives him <laughs> the, the most passionate kiss you've ever seen in WWE. Mm-hmm. It was all right. And then, sm- <laughs> and then smacks him so hard in the face. What the hell's wrong with you? That's open Slack, huh? so, uh, what a woman! <laughs> <laughs> what a lucky guy! I was I was really hoping uh, I'll take two slaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was I was hoping for something different from Ellsworth. I don't know. What, what were you guys' thoughts on this whole thing? Or am I just? Oh, we're supposed to have thoughts on this? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I did not plan ahead for this. Um, <laughs> um, can, uh, change the subject. <laughs> We can move right along if you want. That's fine. Uh, that pretty much. We did. We did. We did. We the, U- the Usos and the dude and the New Day did a little uh, backstage. The New Day. <laughs> the New Day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Absolutely right. Uh, they got. We got a little promo from them. It's going to be the Sin City Street Fight. Never heard that before. Uh, next week in Las Vegas because uh, these nuts. Anything goes! So the very rare no DQ match in professional wrestling next week on SmackDown. But it should be good. These two have been putting these two Fuck teams yeah. have been putting on great matches back and forth. So all right, let's get into something else just like I did a second ago. Change, Change the, the subject. subject. Talk some Ring of Honor television. 
Jay Lethal and Beer City Bruiser had a awesome hell of a start. Hell of, talk about a street fight, right? We had that. These men. <laughs> Hey man, you know it's serious when they have jeans on. Right, right. He's out there. Lethal is in his jeans. Beer City Bruiser's got his keg. He's getting chairs. He's he's going he's going after all of the weapons. Uh, of course, Silas Young. He wants to interrupt so hard, but <laughs> Ring of Honor's smart. They realize the the, the the gravity of the situation. Yes, it's a no disqualification. Anything goes match. But they do this. I, I actually really <laughs> this like this. Is a really good. Touch. Touch. They fucking line up the stage with security, so Silas can't come out and help his buddy. So you get you get the one on one match <laughs> with all the bullshit with the weapons and everything. But then. So Silas Young, because since he can't get to the ring, he goes and helps out on commentary. <laughs> so I enjoyed uh, Silas on commentary here for Ring of Honor. Is that your beef? He's got the opportunities you're not getting? That's exactly my beef. That's all I've been hearing for years. i got to watch those stupid commercials with him for that knee brace. It makes me sick. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the the knee brace commercials, of course. Listen up, wrestling fans. And then uh, he wanted to know later, Colt did, if he had any advice for Beer City Bruiser going into this no disqualification <laughs> battle. Of course, me and Bruiser are always talking about strategy. What do you tell him to use? I told him to get his hands on some weapons, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> well, I've got some duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> so a sound strategy session between Silas. I think you should get some, get some weapons, honestly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Him so, admitting that Beer City Bruiser doesn't think about things. <laughs> right, yeah, they, they talked about uh, Bruiser's mind here. I don't think anybody had it. duct tape in mind. Well, it doesn't matter what anybody had in mind, it's what Bruiser has in mind. Well, he doesn't have much of a mind up there. <laughs> no offense to your buddy. Hey, no offense taken. We don't, me and the Bruiser don't hang out because uh, our witty conversation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the Bruce, Bru, uh, Beer City Bruiser get, great. gets the duct tape, tries taping him uh, lethal to the to the rope. That doesn't work. But in the end of the match, lethal hits the lethal injection, tapes the Beer City Bruiser to the bottom rope instead of going for the pin, beats the shit out of his knee with a, with a beer keg and a chair. <laughs> I'll give Beer City credit. He, he was selling like a motherfucker. Yes, man. yes. And I, I, again, on commentary, you know, they... They were talking about uh, how, how uh, oh, this is awful with the with the with the duct tape and everything. The ref should step in. Whereas earlier in the match, it was it was the other way around. Of course, when it was <laughs> when the when Beer City Bruiser had the. This uh, is the first the time tape. I've been happy with Ian Riccoboni. Him just this entire episode. Actually, I he's he's finally getting there. I think. Yeah, and he he, mm-hmm. he plays the role of neutral announcer, good. But then when bullshit's happening, he's upset, right. and he should be. That, that if you're a neutral guy, when bullshit happens, you should be like, oh. That's awful. God damn it. No, 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 no. So I, I, I like that aspect uh, of it as well. Uh, so Lethal does get the win. It was funny. He beats the shit out of his knee, right? He's just beating him and beating him and beating him. And then he he finally taps out after getting put into the figure four. <laughs> <laughs> just tap out. Just give up now. Give up while he's beating the shit out of you. But I, I like the story of this going because uh, Lethal and Silas Young are going to face off. Uh, I can't remember if it's coming up or if it's going to be at the pay-per-view. Uh, I, I, it should be. I up. think it's I'm at the, it's, it's at the pay-per-view. Yeah, What's uh, the next one called? That is... Uh, sh- here. I've got it right here. Hang on. It is global. No, 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 no. All the worlds? No, 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 no. Ha-ha, Clint Dix? Ha-ha, uh, Clint Dix. I had it right in front of me. I thought I had it. Death Before Dishonor. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, sep- it's definitely happening sep- that. September 22nd, so Lethal faces Silas Young there, but now Beer City Bruiser can be selling this brutal knee injury mm-hmm. uh, and staying out of, the, out of that match. So I, I like that aspect of the story there. Then we have a really, a really nice promo from Cody Rhodes uh, talking about his upcoming match at uh, at Death Before Dishonor versus Minoru Suzuki. Fuck! <laughs> Defending the uh, Ring of Honor Championship, but no, this one this one was good too because <clears throat> it's Cody talking about the differences between MMA and and Suzuki having all of these legit wins, and he brings up the word uh, the word real uh, and, and stuff like that, and just comparing it to quote sports entertainment and pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I liked I liked the Cody promo there. I could have sworn he was on uh, the Elite, just swearing and being pissed about the match. Yeah, well, he was, he was, he did a, he, that was basically his promo last week was just him throwing a fit in the locker room. <laughs> and yeah, uh, being upset about the match on being the elite was, uh, was definitely in play as well. But I like him putting the, the, putting up a front here, mm-hmm. saying that he's going to stretch fucking Suzuki and black both of his eyes, <laughs> you know, just talking some shit. So, uh, awesome. it, it just makes me a little more interested in the match because well, you have to going into a Suzuki match. The guy talks nonstop. 
stop shit in New Japan. <laughs> well, and, and the fact that uh, well Suzuki just has just that legit feel, even in his pro wrestling matches, mm-hmm. whereas Cody doesn't. So uh, that 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 difference between those two, uh, I like kind of Cody uh, uh, cutting this. Let's out see of a him. slightly different Cody for that match. We're gonna have to. Uh, we had the uh, continuation of the uh, Will Ferrara cheeseburger saga. Will Ferrara attacked Cheeseburger uh, wearing a Jushin Thunder Liger mask at a meet and greet earlier mm-hmm. in the day. Uh, so that was a nice touch there. Those two are going to be facing off at... Uh uh, actually, that's going to be on next week's television, Cheeseburger versus mm. Will Ferrara. Cheeseburger came out mm. and challenged Will Ferrara after he beat a, uh, a match with uh, Howie Timberche. <laughs> Are you guys burping and farting over there? Is that what's no, happening? No, you're saying <laughs> Cheeseburger, <I'm> like, mm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Cheeseburger delicious, mm. yes. You know I got zero Fs to give. Uh, but yeah, Will Ferrara won a match. Cheeseburger challenged him. Uh, we had the Coleman, uh, the uh, Caprice Coleman's pulpit segment finally, but uh, unfortunately there was uh, no pulpit, no set. It was uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was Bush League, as the Addiction pointed out, mm-hmm. who were the guests on the on the pulpit segment. But this was all about the Addiction saying why they attacked Motor City Machine Guns and the Young Bucks it has nothing to do with them. It has to do about uh, the fans turning on Christopher Daniels and uh, and Kazarian. Uh, so they are, are waging war on the fans. And anything the fans like, they are going to ruin the addiction. has, Which I'm excited for. You're excited true. for the addiction ruining things. Yeah, I mean, it's, because it's, there's going to be so many good things, and they are going to come out right at the end and just be like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Uh, then the main event, Br- uh, Mark Briscoe and Bully Ray take- taking on Hangman Page and Cody in a tag match. This was supposed to be a six-man tag, but after the uh, uh, Kingdom beat up Jay Briscoe a couple of mm-hmm. weeks back, con- gave him a concussion with chairs and stuff, Jay Briscoe cut a really nice promo talking about concussions mm-hmm. and the doctors, they won't clear me. These, uh, these what did he call them? The... Uh, uh, these I don't know. I have no idea. White <laughs> barrel crackerjack motherfuckers. Pretty I didn't much. watch it. So. Close That's pretty much what it was. <laughs> he, he, but uh, he complained about how the doctors won't clear him for, for concussions, but they still bought him a plane ticket. He's still in the building. And so you think I'm a liability because I have a concussion? Well, I'm in the building, and that's a liability. <laughs> so that was kind of the closing moment of that. You got a concussion, but we're going to let you fly. <laughs> well, and bring him to the, the, to the show. <laughs> of course, so he comes out during the match and causes a bunch of, of, of ruckus uh, because well, Paige and Cody are out there uh, wrestling but then uh, TK Orion comes out uh, it go, knocks Mark Briscoe off the top which leads to Cody and Hangman Page getting the win Cody hitting the crossroads and then uh, uh that's when uh, all hell breaks loose and, and uh, the kingdom attack Bully Ray and the Briscoes. But actually, uh, what to... I like is what you're missing is is Marty Skrull. That's right. Skrull he comes came in out. and that's, that's when was. that's when uh, Jay Briscoe, they just fu- that part I love. Just the fact that the match is going on and you got Jay Briscoe and Marty Skrull just beating each other. Yeah, <laughs> the surrounded yeah, there's arena. one point where like a kid's just walking by and they just zoom right by and the kid's like looking up at them as they pass by like, what? Did I walk into <laughs> <laughs> some dude hands him an umbrella <laughs> yeah. out there in the audience? So uh, yeah, continuation of the, the 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 kingdom attacking everybody, and uh, cool. they're gonna have a. I think they're number gonna, one contenders match. They're gonna yeah. What, what was that match? Uh, I, think, I think it was next week for. I, I want to say that too, but I didn't take a note on it. So uh, and That's obviously they're gonna have Bubba a, and Briscoe's against the kingdom for number one contendership. Sure, sure. For the tag or for the six man tag? The six man six tag. Man. Okay, there you go. So, all right. It's pretty much the match that we should have had a couple months ago before right. TKO. Right, 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 right. So, going back to that mm-hmm. story, of course. Uh, I want to talk New Japan here a, a little bit, too, before we get into some other stuff. I just want to preview since we're on the. I feel like Ring I of paid Honor for a whole month of su- subscription and didn't even use it once. <laughs> <laughs> but you got the whole G1. Exactly. Which was like, like it's worth six months worth of they're matches. They're worth my right money. There. Uh, uh, you could have watched the uh, the Tai Chi and uh, <laughs> uh, Taka Michinoku show or whatever, but uh, so we got the uh, Road to Destruction coming up. We got a couple of shows there, and then we've got the three big destruction shows in September, where uh, 
there's a there's a different main event for each show. Uh, this first one is going to be Suzuki defending the Never title, I believe. Uh, well, we'll we'll go through it. I want to I want to talk these Road Two shows here a little bit first. Uh, not a ton to talk about undercard wise. We got the Young Lions on there who are fun to watch. But this first one, this first Road Two show uh, t- that you'll be able to watch uh, tonight for Thursday, September seventh. Uh, the main event for that one is a five way elimination oh, yeah. tag match. So if you're a Survivor Series fan, here's New Japan's version. It's going to be Okada. Ishii, Toru Yano, Will Ospreay, and Rocky Romero, Team Chaos, taking on Los Ingobernables de Japón, yes. Naito, Evil, Sonata, Bushi, and Takahashi. So it could be a lot of fun, interesting matchups, yeah. depending on who it comes down to. Elimination style, of course, Okada and Naito are your upcoming Wrestle Kingdom main event. Evil defeated uh, Okada in the tournament, uh, so... Uh, all, all sorts of fun stuff there. Uh, of course, the, the Osprey Hiromu thing going on. Uh, Rocky Romero is always fun. Toro Yano taking off turnbuckle pads is mm-hmm. always uh, part of it, too. So Fuck yeah, I'm so glad New Japan's back. Yes. <laughs> so then the Saturday Road 2 show, more of the same on the undercard. We've got uh, uh, Kawado and Oka teaming up to take on Umino and Kitamura, the big uh, jacked up one. Oh, and then Nagata mm. and Nakanishi. That's a six man. Nagata and Nakanishi on opposite sides All there right. as well. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of other multi man matches. But then this one, we got another elimination style tag match, Survivor Series match, Taguchi Japan, which is Taguchi, Ricochet, Kushida, Hiroshi. Ricochet! Hiroshi Tanahashi and Michael Elgin taking on Suzuki Gun. So Minoru Suzuki, Takahashi Izu or uh, Ta- uh, Takashi Izuka, <laughs> El Desperado, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Tai Chi. Rikishi! So again, the uh, El Desperado and Kushida have a match coming up for the uh, for the IWGP uh, Junior Title yeah. uh, on one of these destruction shows, and then of course the the Tanahashi and and Suzuki thing in there. Or, uh, Suzuki's going to be taking on Elgin. Uh, uh, to defend the uh, Never Open Weight title on uh, Fuck one of these yeah. shows. I think that is actually the Sunday show. Let me get to it here. Yeah, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> nope, now I screwed up here. I got to go. But Joe's got to walk away, and nope. I got to look up my other. <laughs> He's about to piss himself. My, my schedule's all messed up here. I think he put a little puddle on your couch. Met to rub his nose in it. Yikes. Thanks, Joe. All Man, right. this is thrilling podcasting yeah, right well, now. Yeah, well, I had it all <laughs> ready to go, and then it, I, I switched it up, and now, okay, September 10th. Okay, so, that's the one we not. Which one is this? This is for Sunday, and I was looking- God, I can't believe this was ready September. Yep, yeah, and the, so the main event for this one is Suzuki versus Elgin for the Never, okay. and then also on this, on all three of the main destruction shows- are going to be the uh, the tag title matches. So Hanson and Rowe defending against Tonga Loa Tamatonga and Davy Boy Smith and Lance Archer from That'd the Killer fun. Elite Squad. So each one of these uh, destruction shows is going to have a three way tag match for the IWGB tag nice. titles. Nice. So it's weird because it's it is kind of weird though because it's the same match all three shows. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, I think everybody's thoughts are probably the Killer Elite Squad probably getting the titles and keeping them after mm-hmm. it's all said and done. But I mean, War Machine's been looking really good lately. They've been doing some fun. Shit. Been, I don't know what promotions they are doing this shit in, but fucking are these guys cruiserweights? <laughs> <laughs> like fuck, man! They're so fun to watch. Yeah, War Machine and the Gorillas of Destiny. They've been ha- having great matches, so uh, I'm looking forward to to these three way matches. Thank you for mm-hmm. turning on the fan, Taco. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty much uh, the destruction uh, car. Uh, and Kenny Omega is going to be defending at the uh, at the last one, what uh, the September 24th show in Kobe. That's going to be mm. uh, Omega versus. Uh, yeah, he said he was going to take him. His injury break until the 22nd. Right, right. And then the 24th is the show in Kobe where he defends uh, against Juice. The Saturday, the the 16th show is going to have the Kushida versus uh, El Desperado for the junior title. And that one is Tanahashi versus Zack Sabre for the IC Mm. title. uh, 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 On the 16th. Damn. But this weekend we get Suzuki and. uh, and haha, ha Clinton Dix. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. <laughs> who did Smack I, those dicks Who around. did I just say? It's uh, I just had it up here. 
Uh, Elgin, of Elgin. course. Elgin, of course. Elgin. <clears throat> so. I still can't register my mind that's fucking ready September fucking 7th today. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, uh, Jesus Christ. Right, yeah. I'm still it, thinking like, okay, when's September 10th? Oh, in a couple days. Well, our, our August didn't feel like August up here. No. It was so cool and mild. <laughs> and so it's like, when's August coming? But mm-hmm. it never came. Never and came. And so now we're, we're a week into September. And Got here. fucking three inches of snow. Like, it's insane <laughs> out there. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm losing it here. Wow, that was awkward silence. Mm, yeah. We're only one beer deep, too. Yeah, what the I, fuck? Well, where's my other one, damn it? <laughs> uh, Joe, you were out there. I will, You I fucked, fucked you, up. You <laughs> fucked Who up. doesn't bring all the beer? <sighs> all right, let's get into the subject. Last week's Lucha Underground. We could... We could talk. We could talk about this week's, but we can't because we didn't see it. Nah, I didn't uh, watch it. But uh, well, it's on right now if you want, <laughs> as we record this. But uh, so maybe yeah. that's what I should have on the computer as we podcast. That'd be too distracting. <laughs> I think there's too much. There's too much insanity going on. This here. much. Anything goes. Too much violence. Ah. Beginning <laughs> of the show, Dario tells Matanza, uh, who's in his cell with a bloody question mark on the wall, that in two weeks it's going to be episode 100, and he wants him to destroy Rey Mysterio Jr. for uh, uh, he wants revenge because uh, he gave Dario the 619 when Dario interrupted the match that they took that they built up for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> Mundo versus Rey Mysterio. Dario, I still don't know why he went out and screwed Rey Mysterio. Uh, in, a, in a show that explains so much to us, they mm-hmm. didn't do a very uh, good. good I mean, if they did, I, I, I missed it. Uh, but um, actually, just because I remember paying attention a little bit on well, this one, please give me. Is basically that Johnny Mundo says that if he doesn't get a fair match, and there, I don't know if there was any bullshit, but if, if he felt that it was unfair, he was leaving. He had that agent dude with him, and they're like, Johnny Mundo's out of here. If he if this match is uh, any way possible, you know, bad. I suppose that that might be that might have been Dario's motivation. Yeah, I that's feel like neat. it should be something more, yeah. Uh Vampiro tells us that Ultima Lucha Trace will be four episodes long, or at least four hours, I think. Mm. Uh, I, I couldn't tell he it was confusing because he kept saying it's gonna it's I gonna be said four episodes away. I thought he well, that was it. I couldn't tell if he said it's gonna be four weeks or that's going to last four weeks or I'm pretty it, sure he said four episodes away. So I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Son of Madness took on the, the mini Masquerita Sagrada, of course, one with the Brain Buster. Son of Havoc comes out and attacks him after the match. Dario decides to make the main event the Boyle Heights Biker Brawl. <laughs> and, of course, that match is... This match! Anything goes! It's, it's funny when WWE's like, oh, we're having a no disqualification match. Oh, we're having a street fight. We're... It's like, just pick the same fucking name. But when fucking, <laughs> to me, when Lucha Underground's, oh, we're having the the backstage slapper fest, I'm like, yeah! <laughs> the, Bo- <laughs> the Boyle Heights Biker Brawl. <laughs> just rename it whatever. <laughs> Then it was Arhenis, uh, who is back from uh, having his arm broken by Pentagon, taking on Marty the Moth. Marty the Moth in this match rips the mask. Mariposa distracts and attacks behind the referee, throws Arhenis into the post, and he's bleeding um, after the match. Well, Marty the Moth does get the win after all, all the shenanigans, and after Marty the Moth unmasks Arhenis and wipes the blood on his face. Then he throws the mask at Melissa Santos. Remember, <laughs> Melissa Santos has a thing for Phoenix, and then says he wants Phoenix at Ultima Lucha Trace. Phoenix comes out and says, I want this to be a mask versus hair match at Ultima Lucha cool. Trace. So that's what we're going to get there. Then Sexy Star took on Joey Ryan in my favorite intergender match ever because fuck Sexy Star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Joey Ryan uh, super kicked her in the face and got a win after Sexy was attacking Taya, who was out there applauding at ringside. <laughs> it was really funny. Taya was out there sarcastically uh, cheering on Sexy Star, uh, which was... W- 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 it's so such, ironic. <laughs> such an interesting... This was taped over a year ago, and with what's going on <laughs> storyline-wise, right. or, or in real life-wise, with with, with uh, Sexy Star... Well, that's some news really, we missed. Uh, her getting stripped of the title. Sexy Star? Yeah. Very nice. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Hashtag bad Sexy Star. There you go. Uh, Joey Ryan, like I said, did get the win after uh, Cortez Castro attacks Joey Ryan with a kendo stick, and Dario makes the 5-0 street fight for a medallion mm. for this week on Lucha Underground. <laughs> so again, see what I'm saying? I love it. The <laughs> unique stipulation, and of course, this match. No 
anything goes. I love the medallion factor. That is one thing from Lucha Underground. Earning the medallion to right. get into that match is just it's fun. That yeah, mm-hmm. that 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 is a cool thing. And then yeah, the Gift of the Gods match, and then holding the Gift of the Gods title uh, allows you to get a a title shot for the Lucha Underground title. So uh, yeah, that, that that is a fun aspect to the Lucha Underground storytelling. Then the main event, the Boyle Heights Breaker a uh, Biker Brawl, Son of Havoc taking on Son of Madness. Havoc does get the win with the shooting star off the top. Son of Madness hits a slingshot double stomp to the floor. There's trash cans and signs. They brawl into the crowd. Nice late sequences and near falls. Son of Madness attempts to use a hammer, but it gets countered with a beer bottle to the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fun matches. Uh, yeah. Lucha Underground has been delivering uh, fun in-ring stuff. I it's, feel like there haven't been enough murders on Lucha Underground lately. I'm sure they'll get to one next week oh, or two. Point, so, I mean, they, you've got Dario taking on Rey Myster- or, uh, uh, Matanza taking on mm-hmm. Rey Mysterio Jr. here in a week or two. Uh, and When's he, the last time we've really seen him even on Lucha Underground? Well, he's been, he's been, he's been locked up in Dario's uh, 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 sex dungeon. Sex dungeon <laughs> backstage, yes. So, uh, so he's been keeping him locked away until he's needed him. Now Mask he's- versus this day. <laughs> now he needs him for revenge. <laughs> All right, let's uh, wrap up the show. We wanted to save May Young Classic for the end because I know people are trying to avoid spoilers mm. on the May Young Classic. I was not able to do that, but uh, let's get into let's get into uh, NXT and the May Young Classic. Change the subject. NXT. <laughs> Fun show from NXT this week. Uh, Fucking Lars Sullivan taking on the Geek Squad. Why did that get cut off so early? There were Dude. other people complaining about that on Twitter. What happened? It's with the return of Solomon Crow. I, 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 Lars Sullivan just tossing men. Oh. It was just so much well, fun. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? No. Yes. Oh, let's, let's hit this. Taco, one. that was that rude. Is so profane, Dana. Yeah, I'm and rude. rude. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> The uh, Andrade Cien almost finally got his revenge versus Cesar Bonani. Mm-hmm. Uh, ones with the wins with the Hammerlock DDT with uh, Selena Gomez. Is that her name? Her... Vega. V- Selena Vega. I'm sorry. I'm too busy yelling. <laughs> Selena. <laughs> Selena Vega on commentary helping out. Explaining. I like her explaining the story. She's known almost forever. She's helped get him back into uh, into shape. She get, smacked him into shape. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got him out of the clubs. Uh, it, 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 Got him back on track. So I really did like this because, like, uh, um, fucking, what was the dude's name? Uh, Cesar Bonani. When Cesar Bonani, uh, or Bononi, you know, I think. Ben- is how he's I mean, no, Bonani's funner to say. Yeah, it's way funner to say. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> when he got that pinfall over him right. a couple of weeks ago, it was kind of like the fuck you guys doing, but it, it, uh, it's. Be patient, everyone. You know, it's like, look at the Japanese wrestling. Patient. The payoff is worth it. Look at Emma. Patient. The payoff exactly. worth it. Exactly. It, it's kind of the same case here. It was like, what the fuck is going on? And then seeing him these last couple of weeks get his steam back and then get finally getting that pinfall over this guy again. It's like, oh, okay. You know, just the long payoff. So I, I, I like, you know, I like that they did that with him. I liked uh, Regal talking about we're not going to have any more shenanigans from these future shot guys, Adam, Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Bobby Fish. You're going to take care of business in the ring, not in the, what do you call it, the car park? The car park. <laughs> the car, <laughs> not in the car park, not, 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 not on the backstage. You're going to take care of things in the ring, as I do a horrible uh, accent there. Uh, <laughs> Zeta took on Sonya Deville. Uh, of course, Zeta uh, not, uh, not uh, uh, doing herself any favors in the opening round losing losing to Sonya Deville or uh did I say that right? No, you didn't. Uh, nope. <laughs> Shayna Baszler. Sorry. See, oh god, they need to change Sonya Deville at this point. You like, know what? I, I you didn't. You weren't watching this match. You you had your nose buried in I, your phone. It's just with Shayna Bl- Baszler right now being a, a real MMA fighter coming out here, being a badass coming to the ring, and then I see, um, uh. Whatever her face is. Ha ha Clinton Ha ha Clinton Dix. <laughs> just coming out. Sonya Deville. She looks like someone pretending to be an MMA fighter. I know she has a background in it, but it, it just doesn't look legit anymore. She's, I don't know, she just kind of needs to step away from that I'm an MMA badass girl because you're not. I, I liked this match. Uh, I thought she I thought she looked uh, as good as she's uh, better than she has in mm. in, in prior performances. Good. Well, and from and, the one thing one match we've seen Zeta in working with Zeta, I mean, 
like I said, it was not as bad as matches I even heard about. Well, but going back to the the Baszler comparison for for Sonya Deville, I think Sonya Deville pulls off the quote gimmick of it mm-hmm. better than the, the 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 Baszler at this point. Her right. her, 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 her her hitting is better. Her strikes are better. Mm-hmm. Her pro wrestling style. Anyway, well, I'm just I'm just talking about her overall appearance. It's just when I see uh, Baszler coming out to the ring. I, I mean, I do know her from the you know when yeah. she was her time in the UFC, but she does look like a fighter coming out to the ring that's true uh this other chick her gloves look oversized she has (laughs) shitty fucking cornrows in and just i just doesn't scream an mma fighter to me it looks like someone pretending to be it looks like the undertaker playing dress up with his mma gloves (laughs) all right fair (laughs) uh, fair enough we had the uh training session film in which ruby riot uh tells uh Regal. Regal, that uh, <laughs> she wants the iconic duo in a handicap match, but Regal says, no, 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 find yourself a tag team partner. We'll do a tag match next week. I like these backstage segments or these things mm-hmm. at the Performance Center where they're doing something else, and then off to the side, this other thing that is of newsworthy happens. There isn't, there's a reason for the camera to be there. They're filming a training session. It's, you know, it's right. Oni Lorcan and the other guy in there training with a couple of nobodies. You got Regal well, looking we lo- at the camera. Are we looking at a tag team here? By the way, because that's the feel I was getting I liked, from it. I liked Oni on Twitter saying, "I need a partner." <laughs> so uh, I, 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 these two just beating the shit out of people. Dusty Rhodes Tag right. Team Classic mm-hmm. is coming up. So uh, again, uh, very very good uh, and interesting stuff. And uh, who's Riot going to get to team up with next week? Someone from the May Young Classic, possibly. Possibly. Hopefully, with the appearance of uh, Zeta being in the NXT tonight. Well, even just throwing it out there just because it's these women and these are the top women, really, of the NXT division. I mean, will Nikki Cross show up? You never know, but mm. there's a little I, bit of I don't. There. I doubt yeah. it with the sanity thing, but yeah. you never know. Now, I feel like it would be more of a, sorry, I can't think of the name, like someone like uh, Abby Lath, you know, someone that's kind of yeah. signed on upon with them right now. Or I think even Mia Yim, as you were saying, because I'm mm. pretty sure she's signed as well. There you go. That'd be a good choice as well. Uh, Itam- Hideo Itami versus Cassius Ono. Finally, we got a no DQ match. This match, <laughs> anything goes. Buttons so getting a workout, rare. man. It is actually t- technically it is actually very rare for NXT to do a match like this. Any kind of gimmick match, really. And so I, I-, I like that. And they kept it simple. Uh, it was mostly in the ring. They did some stuff outside, but not a ton. Uh, I did like the the rolling elbows from Ono. Looked so fucking good in the match. Mm-hmm. Just knocking Itami. Like, well, the, the he does the one where he tosses a Tommy the chair right. and then hits the rolling elbow and then of course sells the shit out of his out of his out of his elbow. But then he's like, "Fuck that! I don't care how much it hurts. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with this thing anyway." And he already had the uh, injury going into it too. Right, it works him up the ramp. Tommy hitting the 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 fisherman suplex on the ramp was cool. Yeah. Uh, and fucking, but Ono getting the win with the fucking low blow mm. uh, <laughs> was. I mean, it's no disqualification, right? These nuts. Anything goes. <laughs> Dude, the Neminator, man. But it was, I mean, but technically it was, fuck it, so uh, Ono goes to, or uh, Tommy goes to kick Ono, and Ono catches it, and Tommy has this great oh shit look mm. on his face, and then pokes him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then that's when the, the, low, the low blow happened uh, shortly after that. And then when the was the last album. time we really saw a good eye poke like that, too? That was just fucking yeah, it was solid. dead center in the camera. That was fucking Rick yeah, Flair man, eye was poke. Exactly. Style. Hey, now, Tanahashi. She was pulling out some eye pokes in the G one when okay, he was okay. <laughs> WWE wise, no, I, I know what you're saying. Know, it was it was good, yeah, and just and the unexpected baby face low blow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after, see, like, I again, didn't like it. Like I, I really feel like Hideo needs these wins more than Ono does. Like. That's a I good s- point. I think both of them need wins here. And I think they're just oh, rolling no. with these two back and forth. We'll roll it with this yeah. entire thing until the next takeover, until it culminates just- in a big cage match or whatever it may be. This might be one of the few times, again, we get a gimmick match on an NXT takeover. Possibly. All right, all right. Anything else NXT before we get into the meat and potatoes of the mm. May Young Classic this week? Now, I, I uh, Asuka. 
Oh, how can I forget? <laughs> how can I forget the Oscars? I've been I've been sitting on this spoiler for weeks because I I, I saw this right after the tapings. They that pretty much fucking announced everybody it everywhere. Everywhere. right, right. It so so like, yeah, come Oscar. On. Uh, the story is that uh, her and uh, Regal will be negotiating with the general managers of Raw and SmackDown, and she has given up. <clears throat> excuse me, the NXT Women's Title uh, as an undefeated champion. I love this story. Can I we think just at least give her a more believable injury to take her off? TV for a little bit of time than a collarbone injury when like <laughs> three days after she's like hands up in the sky on Twitter right, and you hear right. this is going on and then oh she just recovered from a collarbone injury uh, three been, weeks ago. It's she's like, been off TV for it's three weeks. One of the fucking <laughs> worst injuries or bones to fucking break. <laughs> well, it just goes to show you that they, that they don't take the worked injuries no. very seriously. Uh, so At least yeah. say she has like diarrhea or something. <laughs> Come on. Broke her dick. Broke her dick. Uh, so, That's but, rude, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to the positivity of it, I do like the story of instead of the champion losing and For then sure. going up to Raw and SmackDown, she's so good that she can't be beaten and she has to move up mm-hmm. and then has to relinquish the NXT women's title uh, uh, so I, I like that, and I'd like to see that more from the, the from the champions moving up to the main mm-hmm. roster. Uh, I'm glad they did it, you know, in in the tasteful way too of you know coming out, letting her you know type up the crowd, and then kind of regal uh, say his praise, and then you know Triple H coming out saying his <laughs> praise, and then just the whole locker room coming out on the you know the stage was just a surreal moment. That was like, cool. It was like the Nakamura moment, and mm-hmm. you know months ago we want her to just be like. Fuck y'all, bitches! I'm the best to throw the belt at you know. Like, I, I kind of wanted to see that, but I'm glad they kind of went you know the the higher out and just yep. you know just uh, went out with honor. Yeah, and I even liked Ember Moon coming out. Yeah, that was great. Te- teasing the handshake thing, <laughs> but then going in for the hug. I liked it too because they went to battle with each other. Uh, uh, Oscar get, getting the win in the mm. end. She was the better woman, but uh, Ember the Moon be, being her her probably her, her best opponent uh, during the run there. So I liked uh, I liked that aspect of it too so all right let's get into the may young classic um do we need to talk every match from nah. the second round i just kind of highlighted some good whatever ones you here. need to do uh I, I know i know you Sec- had some i know you had some things you wanted to get into joe so if i skip over something that you wanted to to hit on we'll we'll, we'll go back to it uh but opening match of the second round i did really like abby lath versus uh rachel El- mm-hmm. evers I, I still don't know why they don't just call her ellering Ellering. if they're talking about her dad all the time just call her ellering right. you know maybe uh, she married uh, I guess. Shut up, Joe. <laughs> hey, I am giving explanations. At, at least you're trying to, to 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 get that in there. So yes, sir. But I, I liked this match. Uh, Evers hitting the the RKO out of nowhere and a big senton for a near fall. Uh, the, Never seen that before. I did the. I, I like the uh, the screaming double kick spot that they hit on each other. That was cool. Uh, the crowd was really hot for this match. Uh, Evers hits the top rope power slam for the near fall. Yeah, that, that was yeah. fun. Good. But uh, Lath getting the win with the alligator clutch she yeah. really impressed me this whole tournament to be honest with you like Ever- evers or lathe lathe okay like I, I i thought she was just gonna be kind of another face that blends in but i you know there, there's something there with that chick solid per, you know worker there so I, i'm surprised she went as for you know we're gonna get into it but um mm-hmm. i'm surprised she got as far as she did but you know i, I thought she was kind of one of the stick out stars to me yep. oh yeah spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip over some of these matches here. They were, I mean, Ser- uh, Serena Deeb lost to Piper Niven. Not a huge surprise there. But I was actually pretty impressed with Deeb in this match, even though you felt like Piper was going to get the win. I think she impressed for going up a girl that size and p- actually pulling off some moves against her. Sure. Princess of Suhey losing to Mercedes Martinez. That one pissed me off. Uh, me, 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 I, I was a little surprised there, but uh, throughout the tournament, I thought uh, Mercedes had really good performances, and we'll get to some I of those I feel like later. it was just a poor match here, though, it, like, yeah. especially with how well Princess Suhey looked in the first match. Like It was just it was disappointing for me. <laughs> She's Mercedes is selling the arm after getting worked over the entire match. That's kind of the been the story of her tournament. Mm-hmm. Then in the post match, the ref raises the bad arm. <laughs> it's like, come on, ref, put her on the other side. Uh, Kyrie Sane versus Bianca Belair. Uh, this was one of the better matches of the tournament, and it go it shows how good Kyrie Sane is that she can she can go in there with someone that's pretty damn green in Bianca Only Belair. Been a year. And Bianca Belair looked really good on offense, but Bianca Belair <laughs> didn't look as good when she had to sell for uh, for Sane. But Sane, this Sane made this match uh, uh, very very good. But I thought it's 
just Bianca Belair just shows you how good that performance center is. I've you know I've you know blowing smoke up their asses before, but you know she's a prime example. She's only been doing this for nine, barely even a fucking year, and she's able to go in a you know a match like that with Carrie Sane. You know I, I thought she was super impressive, and she's another one that person that is I think was another stickout star, like it's probably a star in this tournament. I, I'm looking forward to her, and um, I don't know if you saw like the they've been doing the kind of the combine in the NXT right now. Yeah, she's fucking dominating all of them. <laughs> there, here's the thing: is there's a lot of people being critical of the combine thing because <laughs> that being able to do those kinds of uh, stunts or, or whatever athletic uh, achievements, things that you would do in a combine, do not translate at all to being a good professional wrestler. Get in the ring, learn to trade some holds. It doesn't, you know? but I disagree a little it, bit. I do too. Like a lot of the names are in like top three, you know, top five even were kind of like the top names in this tournament. So it's just, you know, it, it, it was cool to see, you know, this like, um, Tino Sabatelli. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the fucking, the chick that came out dressing like the, the hamburger, you know, like she got, got on there a couple of like, weightlifting things, but yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, it was a good way to kind of show you their strengths and you know who's fast and who's strong because honestly watching this tournament most of these women was i'm a powerhouse i'm a striker <laughs> yeah all of you are like really <laughs> cool so i don't know it's just you know it, okay she, it was a good way to get her name you know just all over across the board and just seeing what she's done from her no name matches to NXT to this highly, you know, Carrie Sane fucking match. Yeah, she went toe to toe with this chick. I, I loved, she just looked really strong early. I love that blowing, the, the, the kiss blowing spot mm-hmm. where she blows with the kiss. Kyrie catches it and stomps all over it. I, the, the, the spot to where uh, Bel Air could take over where she just started whipping the shit out of her with her hair. I loved that. I hate it. Uh, the, the crowd was just so fucking, uh, 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 it was split. Hot. Like well, they, were, they hated it. They, the crowd was like, "Boo! That's bull. This is yeah. bullshit." But that's what was hot about it mm-hmm. is that it was it was such bullshit that it was just like, "Oh!" The and heat. you get both sides right here just for the fact that because I don't know what it was, but I was with the crowd on this. Fucking hated it. <laughs> it's a fucking illegal move. I How? don't care. It's if part it's, of her fucking body. Uh, it's in a foreign object. Ooh, it's it's being whipped into her, her face. <laughs> hey, where's she from? Technically, that makes her foreign, right? She's from, like, Texas. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> or Atlanta. <laughs> Kyrie Sane does get the win with the top rope elbow. She lands mm. right on her. Too. Yeah, again, I, as a, I, we were talking before the, the show here, uh, <laughs> one of the problems when you're green, you don't know how to set things up. She, mm. That was One of the problems in, the, in this match was that the way that she fed into Kyrie's offense was often out of place, uh, just a little bit off, and that's a, 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 just a, a, a matter of being green. Yeah, and timing. So, and you know, her taking the move right before the top rope elbow she should have put herself into position when she bumped right. to be in the right spot to take the elbow she didn't do that had to take the weird elbow she has a bright future though. definitely De- big time big time yeah. uh, uh moving on to uh episode six of the may young classic continuing the second round uh, tony storm versus Lacey evans not much here uh tony storm got the win with strong zero Shayna baszler versus mia yim baszler getting the win there with the rear naked sleeve Sleeper counter to the 450. Uh, Mia Yim looked good here. I'm looking forward to seeing her a, sh- a little bit more on NXT. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Rhea Ripley uh, versus Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai getting the win with the Tree of Woe double stomp. The uh, <laughs> Del Rio style double <laughs> stomp. But executed pretty See, good. Hers looks a little bit smoother than his. Like it- well, and I, I like when there, somebody is in the Tree of Woe, and the idea is they're trying to do a sit-up to get themselves out of the Tree yeah, of Woe, exactly. and that's when you hit the uh, the, the double stomp. Not, Not, hey, I'm waiting for you. Right. And, right yeah, here on the chest. Sitting, Blow your load right Sitting here. there holding yourself up <laughs> on the ropes like the entire time. Yeah, that's just obnoxious. Uh, so but I so I like that aspect of it. Uh, Candice LeRae versus Nicole Savoy. LeRae getting the win with the uh, second this rope a swinging neck fun match for me, I think. Think that it really showcased both Savoy and Larray because Savoy was tossing Larray around. Yeah, a few she's got times. an awesome suplex mm-hmm. game, is, is what I noted there. Uh, so yeah, very good match there. Abby Lath versus uh, uh, Mer- Mercedes Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> Butt cape. Butt cape. <laughs> Abby Lath is, is 
your affectionate uh, term for her. It's my wife's affectionate term. She just goes, what the fuck is with the butt cake? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martinez, uh, uh, nice strikes and slaps, dominates the match uh, early. Abby Lath hits a awkward top rope high cross to the floor, uh, but Martinez gets the win with the Fisherman's Buster uh, in that match, knocking Lath out of the tournament. Shayna Baszler beat Candice LeRae in the uh, 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 semi uh, uh, quarterfinals, whatever they were. Uh, quick match. Yeah, Garbage quick, match. Quick match. Counters the top rope move into the sleeper. Uh, nice octopus into a submission hold after a, a suicide tornado DDT mm-hmm. from uh, Candice LeRae. So I wonder if we're going to see more Candice LeRae back in NXT. Is she actually signing or is she going back to the to the indie scene? I feel like she would just join Gargano at least. I mean, at least be on the. Well, road I know with she's kind of trying to stay away from Gargano. They kind of. I don't know if you guys saw that awkward interaction they had backstage, but <laughs> no, she was. I mean, they're always an awkward couple in the first place. But she was just kind of being interviewed, and then Gargano comes out and he's like, "Hey, good job on your match." He's like, "Oh, thanks." Like. I'm in a fucking interview right now, and he kind of like goes in for a kiss, and she's like, "What the?" Kind of goes. It was like super fucking awkward, but you know, uh, you know, she's like she even said it like she's she's not trying to get into WWE because of Johnny Gargano. Right, she wants right. to pave her own path. Get in on. But her I own. know there's kind of been some um um uh things going around that since he's been feuding with uh, uh, Almas right now, that'd be a good way for. Her. Him to bring her in sure, to sure. kind of do a, a mixed tag Vega. match with <clears throat> Selena. Sure, sure. There you go. All right, then the semifinals of the tournament. Some, uh, some, a couple of the better matches, I'd say, but not maybe not the best. Uh, Shayna Baszler versus Mercedes Martinez. Baszler getting the win with the sleeper here again. Uh, this is the first handshake that Baszler did in the mm-hmm. entire tournament, showing some respect to Mercedes. I guess these two uh, are part of the same crew or, or train together a, a bit, I yeah, guess. Yeah, Mer- Mercedes Martinez was the leader of the group, and she was kind of the protege. So, Mar- again, Martinez dominates. I wanted to bring up this point, too, uh, going back, to actually, to the Martinez versus Abby Lath match. One of the problems I had with this with this entire women's tournament is that the matches were all very patterned. And there, yeah. it would come to a point in a match where when one person was dominating and you'd be like, oh, well, the other person, I guess, is going to win. And most of the time, <laughs> that would happen. But going back to the Abby Lath-Martinez match, Martinez pretty much dominated that whole thing. And there was a one point I'm like, well, Abby Lace got to win this thing now, but then it was Martinez who ended up mm. winning at, uh, uh, in that match. But you go back to this uh, this uh, semi main or uh, semi final match versus Baszler. Uh, Martinez does dominate early in the match, uh, but comes back with a double gut wrench. I do like the, uh, the that gut wrench spot that Baszler uses in these matches. That's a kind of a unique gut wrench right. suplex spot that she does. A nice strike battle back and forth. Martinez hits her fisherman's bust her finisher but can't get over uh, to cover her right away eventually does get the cover for a near fall but then it was uh, uh Baszler getting the the tap out win uh with the sleeper going to the final so for- well and uh, the thing about this match for me these two this was their first really good match I I, I enjoyed the Abby Lath Martinez match but it was still one I was on butt cape side but right. <laughs> also it, it just didn't feel comfortable it didn't feel good whereas these two one know each other two mercedes has trained her as well so the comfortability factor and the fact that they can take different liberties it made the match feel a little bit more real yeah and it was it was the the, the hardest hitting match for baszler so far and that's kind of what i've been waiting mm. for to see something like that out of her yeah. that being said i thought mercedes martinez looked better as it looked like the better pro wrestler i mean with that 16 years experience yeah, well, that helps. <laughs> hey, it's, it helps having Ronda Rousey on your back, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, 16 years experience. Uh, that was a, an interesting uh, thing that came out from this show, too. The, uh, the, the, the two trios of horsewomen kind of facing off in the parking lot and Rousey saying, uh, you name the time and place. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, a bit of a tease for something Someone possibly needs to Someone needs to come. sit Ronda Rousey down and be like, you need to be that badass bitch that fucking everyone knows in the whole fucking role. Like, sh- it was a little too, like, actor actress like, well, to wwe, WWE. <laughs> yeah like it was that's, uh. why I, I, that's why i have no interest in this like i i was kind of interested when they teased it 
like you know months before you know we've got, had some types of interactions but like seeing it up live and on tv and i'm just like yeah i have no interest really. i'll be interested when i when i hear that that uh Rousey is training in mm. professional wrestling because you take an untrained person and put them in a pro wrestling match, it tends to be a shit show. Uh, just go back and watch. She's it. pretty private, though, and she's l- fucking Scrooge McDuck duck rich. So. Go back and watch any WCW celebrity match. Well, I'm just saying uh, gonna, she can easily be the, fucking uh, training with people at her. I'm sure she has a compound or something. But. Well, sure, and what's her face? Uh, uh, um one of the, Ha-ha Clinton Dix? Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> Ha-ha Clinton Dix. The, the one that's married to Roderick Strong. Oh, yeah. I mean, she might be, uh, there might be something there, <laughs> is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so you never know. Like like you said, there, there could be something going on on the DL. For sure. And I did not know that one of them was married. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> did you not see This Is My Life, Roderick Strong? I paid attention, <laughs> but I didn't pay attention to his wife. <laughs> Finally, the main event of the uh, the last show here, Kyrie Sane versus Tony Storm. Cool. I alluded to this earlier. I God, I love Tony Storm. Yeah, right. Just yeah. what a star. And so young. She's got so much left to Fuck do yeah. on the indie scene. So I'm disappointed I'm not going to see more of her in WWE. I'm but, happy she's taking that chance. Yeah, me too. And, and I'm uh, I'm excited. I mean, obviously, progress women's champion. Uh, champion all over the world, mm-hmm. as WWE <laughs> likes to say. But it, it has. It, she is a star. And she has me Fuck excited yeah. and interested in looking at some of these other promotions that, that uh, she's involved in. So, well, well uh, this is the one I called last Last week, where I legitimately said I have this picked as my uh, semifinal, and I really want to see this match between these two, and I was so happy when it happened. So, speaking of predictions, it looks like Taco is going to be buying the beer yeah. uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's because Taco up. sucks. <laughs> um, but see, I kind of went for some upsets in this tournament, right. like. God damn, don't make it so obvious. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but uh, I did uh, I did, uh, I did like this match, Sane versus Tony Storm. Nice technical back and forth early. Well, we didn't even talk about uh, uh, Storm and uh, Piper. Piper, man. That was a phenomenal oh, yeah, match. Yeah, P- yeah T- Piper Niven and Tony Storm. Yeah, I, I, had, a, I had it marked to talk about <laughs> it too, and I didn't. Uh, the top rope leg drop uh, from Tony Storm after the second top, uh, the second rope German over Piper Niven. Uh, the the that test of strength spot to open the match mm-hmm. where they go back and forth and they end up like doing bridges on their heads and shaking hands. Yeah, <laughs> Piper showed like I WWE fucked up. They need to get her as soon as the contract is up because it. I know a lot of these chicks right now. You know they're traveling world. They're training with fucking great people, but I keep going to the performance center. How fucking successful it is, and these chicks are. You know, they're going to rule the world if they can get this knowledge in their head. And, you know, I, I want to see some of them in here. Yeah, me, me too. But, uh, again, with the, 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 being young and getting mm-hmm. that getting that indie experience is way more valuable, I For think, sure. than be spending a year or two at the performance center. So I, I'm I'm fine with uh, a lot of these women right. staying uh, on the indie scene. But yeah, Tony Storm, Piper Niven, uh, go out of your way. That one was really good. Uh, I'll surprise you. Yeah, uh, fuck it. I, I, Piper Niven hitting that Michinoku driver for a near fall when that was she, she was finishing mm-hmm. girls with that earlier in the tournament, then missing that big cannonball that she does Ew. in the corner. As I, we as we were watching, I noted that, uh, that fucking there's like three or four girls doing cannonballs. Piper Niven is the only one that should be doing <laughs> cannonballs because uh, yeah, a force of a cannonball. Mm-hmm. I was gonna point out it's one of the few calls that I that the announcers made that I really enjoy, but Piper didn't really get all of that slam against Tony Storm and Mm -hmm. JR immediately said if she had gotten all of that slam this match would be over just that that was a Mm -hmm. perfect call for that moment sure 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 so getting back to the main event now, Kyrie Sane versus Tony Storm. Uh, like I said, technical early. Uh, some uh, so, oh, uh, Sane hits that top rope cross body to the floor onto the grate for the, that's there for the ramp. Cuts she her face fucking up. Fucking imprint of the grate. Yeah, that was insane. Uh, Storm had an awesome late arm submission. Uh, uh, then, uh, excuse me, then hits the top rope leg drop to the back of Kyrie Sane. They end up kind of both working on each other's mm-hmm. backs in the match, which was a nice story. Sane hit with the uh, spinning back fist, 
and then into a into submit into a submission of her own was very nicely worked, and then finally Sane hitting the top rope elbow to the back uh, for the win. So it's Sane versus Baszler in the main event next week. So uh, what is your, your prediction? Prediction. Prediction. <laughs> For the main event, of course, is that that is what you had in the finals, yes. right? So, what do you? What is your final final prediction for this? I one, have Joe? saying with the win, but I'm really not feeling good about it now, just because like they've really been shoving Baszler down our throats, and with the four mm. horsewoman thing going on, uh, it's tough. But see, I feel like that that's- story. Of saying overcoming that is a pretty hell of a story. So I feel like the four horse w- woman thing is why Shane is going to win this. Like that, that that's its own why money Sa- maker. That's why, its own story. Why Shane or, or Shana? Uh uh uh. Pfft, Kyrie Shane okay. is going to win it. Okay. Uh, just uh, Shayna Baszler. She has that four horse woman story going on. That's its whole own ordeal we do not need the woman's title potentially wrapped up into that that is another rumor that the winner of this may be taking the championship right because with oscar vacating mm. but i think when you if you just put it on the tournament winner with you when you don't have a ton of the nxt women superstars ruby riot uh oscar beat all of them nikki cross oscar beat all of them when you don't have those (laughs) women in this tournament it kind of it throws a logic hammer in there that i don't like for sure but uh uh, certainly, you could the, the whoever wins this tournament certainly could get mm. that title shot against somebody, or, or maybe you do another women's tournament in NXT. <laughs> uh, who that would be, I'd be fine with that. I'm just throwing <laughs> out a future prediction here, even though it's not involved with Mayon Classic, I'm, and we're gonna have to wait a long time for it. How awesome is it gonna be to see Kari Sane and Oscar backfist each other right in the <laughs> I face? I don't really want to think about it until it <laughs> can even be a thing. Oh, right. dude, we're talking <laughs> three to five years down the fucking road. At <laughs> this rate. It happens. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm I'm picking Sane just because uh, the crowd favorite. They do mm. it right at NXT. You're right. You both of you guys are right. Baszler is going to be so just meh if she wins. Right, right, yeah. And and her matches have just been kind of. They haven't dazzled me. The the the, pe- the people that she's been in the ring with have been more interesting mm. to, uh, especially in the later rounds. Uh, but. I think uh, going back to the Kyrie Sane versus uh, Bianca Belair match, that proved that Kyrie Sane can have a great match with someone that isn't on that level. Right. And so I think this will be a very good match between these two. Well, and they're doing nothing but work right now oh, leading yeah. up into that live final. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, that should be a And a, then a for the final, fun. too, uh, uh, Rhea Ripley, a favorite of ours for coming out of the show, she re-challenged uh, Dakota Kai for a rematch. That would be nice. fun. So very that, nice. And also that was a fun match with those to be two. a good little event there. Did, uh, is Dakota Kai signed? Or? I believe she is, yes. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, her... her I liked her a lot. Uh, hashtag too. team kick. Right. I am on that team. She is awesome. I love her. I love her kicking it's style. I like that matchup too. too. Is, isn't uh, is Rhea Ripley the Australian then? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So New Zealand versus Australia. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. And the yeah Rhea is the the tall twenty year old, very young and yeah. uh, huge upside. So uh, so there's all of that. I think that pretty much covers the best stuff this week, doesn't yeah. it? Did we did we get did we get all of our shit in as they so. say? All right. Let me flip this thing over here because I am yeah, definitely not it. going to forget the oh. Satoshi Kojima. We, we close out every show here on the Best Pro Wrestling Podcast with the Satoshi Kojima Tweet of the Week. Now it's time for the Satoshi Kojima Tweet of the Week. If you're not familiar, Kojima is a... Uh, New Japan pro wrestling star who loves bread. He is a part of the uh, the uh, Ten Cozy tag team <laughs> and former IWGP champion himself. I'm going to read two tweets uh, in a row that he tweeted in English today. Long time no see. I am in Mexico now. And then the second tweet. Even if I stay in Mexico, I eat bread. <laughs> <laughs> So that's going to do it for the show this week. You can follow the show on Twitter at BPW. Po- whoops. <laughs> that's okay. That was the I hit the intro instead of the outro. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, at BPW Podcast on Twitter. Uh, retweet our stuff. Share it there. Also on Facebook, facebook.com slash best pro wrestling podcast. Send us an email, won't you please? Best pro wrestling podcast at gmail.com. Follow me. At Tommy Stryker, spell Stryker with a Y. Taco, where can people find you? Ooh.
can follow me on the Snapchat, the Twitter, at H-G-R-E-V Taco. And you can follow me on Twitter at Joe BPWP. That's at Joe Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. That's going to do it for the Best Pro Wrestling Podcast this week. Bye. Peace. Because I plan on snatching a ball. Don't you dare be sour. Are we talking now, ain't we? Yeah, you're hearing me now, ain't you? You're just a fake bitch. I can be a superhero. Sigma! You know I got zero F's to give. I don't even want to talk about Global Force. <laughs> 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 I'm so, I was, God, I'm so just...